you talked recently about the search for leaders on this team. How's that going and who are kind of the candidates? Well, obviously Prince and, and Alex um, are the only upperclassmen we have and usually it falls there. Uh, we've had younger guys in the past that have showed really good leadership ability. Aaron was that way, Bryce was that way, Lonzo was that way. Um, but I think with this group, um, you know, Alex is now getting in the fold. He's practicing now, and I, th I hope that's going to help because he's more of a vocal leader. But we really need, I think, Chris Wilkes and, and Jalen Hands. Those are two guys that, from a leadership standpoint, they're getting better. Uh, it's a work. It's not, it, you know, leadership's something that you got to develop, and he's doing, both those guys are doing a better job. But I think those two, there's so much that falls on their shoulders of responsibility that those are the most natural leaders we have. What would that do for the team if you were able, if they were able to hone that, those skills and really grow into that role? Well, it obviously helps because I think that's we're we're playing 25, 30 pretty solid minutes, especially defensively. We're still a work in progress offensively because we're we're so young and understanding spacing and moving the ball and you know the art of screening, the art of uh, of understanding what to do after a screen reading of cuts, it's just a very young team. And so I know that that's gonna take some time to develop defensively. Um, I think we've done some good things, we just can't sustain it. And that's what we're, we're really trying to harp on our guys about is, but again, it's a youth thing of understanding how hard you gotta play over 40 minutes, not 25 or 30 or, you know, we see things like we're doing well defensively and then all of a sudden our offense isn't doing well. So that affects our defense and you can't do that. That's a it's just a young, uh, a mature thing that uh, our guys are dealing with. And we do, we, the coaches, we talk about all the time, we gotta be patient. Uh, I love this group, uh, but it's, a, it's gonna be a process. It's gonna be a journey with them because they're going through it for the first time. And we're watching a lot of tape. I think they're starting to see it. Um, and, and then you just hope there's gonna be some growth. Alex, you mentioned Alex, where is he timetable wise for playing? We will probably have a uh, minutes requirement. I don't, I don't know what that is yet. Uh, I've got to talk to the medical staff. Um, but I think we'll probably have a minutes requirement on him, a limit uh, for Liberty. But he will be I think he's going to be available for Liberty. Uh, again, I don't have. It's not a definite. It's probably hopeful. But he's practiced well all week. So if he gets another good practice in here without any issues, I could see him being available for Saturday with a limit requirement on it. Uh, if practice doesn't go well today, then he may not be available for um, for Liberty. But our hope is that we have him for minimal availability for Liberty, and then when we get into league play, hopefully he'll be full go. You talked after the Ohio State game about uh, comparing it to the 2014-2015 season in the sense of struggling in non-conference a little bit, while well, I lost to Kentucky, and recovering and making it to the Sweet 16. What can you take from that experience, learning that and what that team did. Well, compared. unfortunately, there wasn't much on our team now yeah. <laughs> that was on that team yeah. from an experience standpoint, but at least from a coach's standpoint of experiencing, I think we lost maybe four or five games in a row in that in that stretch as well. And there's teams, I mean, I've been doing this a long time, so you go through stretches of winning, you go through stretches of losing. It's how you handle it, how you grow, how you develop. Uh, and that's really what we've been talking to our guys about. That, uh, you know, we've, we've lost, We've lost to really good basketball teams. Um, in the Belmont game, we were up 14. And that's really, I think, where it, to me, and that's what we've been addressing with our team, is the sustainability defensively, um, the sustainability offensively of sharing the ball. We do it in spurts. We just haven't been able to do it for 40 minutes. And that's what we've got to correct and get better. And if we do that, then I, I like where we're at, excuse me, going into league play. But this is a crucial 40 minutes for us uh, tomorrow to just try to Okay, we, we came back off the road trip where it wasn't successful, very similar to what it was in Vegas. Now can we respond? And, and can we have growth for 40 minutes and figure out how to way of getting a win? And then we had a full week of practice going into Stanford Cal. How do you get that consistency to, to, to do the things you just Well, it's, it, it's a difficult thing because the young players are, there's so much on young players' plates of what they're trying to learn, what they're trying to, to take in. And so we're trying to minimize that stuff. We're trying to kind of show them less things versus more, uh, simplify things of what we want to do offensively, simplify what we're wanting to do defensively, and just get the basics down fundamentally, both offensively and defensively, to free their minds up a little bit. Because this is a group of guys, they, they got a deep care, they're a prideful bunch, they don't like losing, they don't like not playing well. 
and we sense that and we feel that and we appreciate that. So now it's about, you know, how can we help them? You know, maybe just show them clips each day in tape of keeping it simple. Maybe it's bigs pivoting, maybe it's guards post feeding, whatever the simple things that are, just making the fundamentals a little bit simpler for them um, and taking away that pressure of thinking. Because right now we got a lot of guys really overthinking and because of that it's affecting their work and it's it's up on our it's work think and then you have fun and right now we're to me we're overthinking not working the way we need to work and because of that we're not having the fun that we want to have and a lot of young players try to have fun before they understand work or they have fun before they think and it's I've always been a big believer as a player and all through my coaching if you understand work and you understand the ability to think then you have fun and you know obviously our guys aren't having fun, coaches aren't having fun because we're not playing very well. And so I think the workload and how we think will affect how much fun we have. Was that your saying up there? Yeah, I've had that since I got into coaching. Okay. It goes back to my playing days. So, so where did you get it from? Did you get it from somebody? Uh, no, my dad just taught me. Being a coach's kid, my dad taught me uh, uh, from when I was very young that once I understand how hard you have to work and how deeply you got to think the game, uh, then you'll have fun with the game. If you don't ever understand how hard the game is to play and how hard the game is to think, uh, you're never going to have the fun that you want to have. And so it's something that's just stuck with me. Uh, and that's why I invented the individual workout that I did when I was a player and uh, why we're so into our guys with uh, their development, both mentally and physically, uh, because we want them to have the most fun they can have. Um, but every player is different. Every personality is different. And you're just trying to get to each of them of, understanding, hey, if you, if you work at this level and you think at this level, things will start falling into place and you're going to have a lot more fun. Chris Smith's uh, got to a really strong start this season by looking at the last handful of games. And we got to get him going again. Uh, Chris is a, a huge piece of what we're doing because he started the season. His first five games were outstanding. And you're right, we've had a drop off there. And so we've got to get him going again. He's 6'9", he's talented, he can play multiple positions, he's got link defensively. Uh, I think he's a big key coming off our bench of getting us going again. And and he's been a focal point here since getting back from Chicago of a lot of film and just working with him and letting him know how important he is because uh, he's a he's a big key for us and we got to get him going again. In the same way, Moses as well. Mm -hmm. And Moses is, Moses, is, uh, Moses is very young and he's learning too about just the – how this game's so much more than just showing up and playing. And I don't mean that as a negative on him, but a lot of – they get that from AAU to the, the summer play that they get, and there's always another game. And so there's things Moses is learning. Now bigs are going at him in the post. So early in the season they didn't do that because they saw a guy 7-2 and they stayed away from him. Now they're going at him. So watching tape and learning and – uh, understanding that this is how teams are playing you now. There's a 12-game package out there, and so they're getting a lot of film on you, and they're getting to see where you may have weaknesses, and those are getting exposed. And so he's learning that. Uh, but he's got a great work ethic, and uh, we love what he's doing. But you're exactly right. We, the, the production for Mo has got to get up as well.